Hello everyone, welcome to another part of MRCS video. Today our lecture topics is the anatomy of the colon. So here in this picture we can see the colon. Here from here up to there, this is the colon. So first of all, let's see the parts of the colon in this picture. Here, first of all, this is the cecum and lower part of the cecum, posterior medially it and finger like projection which is appendix so cecum appendix then uh, this one is the ascending colon then uh, transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and anus so these are the parts of the colon and again uh, we can see two important structure one is the right colic plugs flexure and another one is the left colic flexure and this right colic flexure is known also as the, the hepatic flexure because liver located at this place so this is called hepatic flexure and on the left side is known as splenic flexure because in this side spleen also is spleen located at this side so this is the parts of the colon and important flexure again cecum this is the cecum appendix ascending colon transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum and anus and in the right side there is right colic flexure and left side left colic flexure. So here again in this picture uh, showing the flexure very clearly here this is the hepatic flexure or right colic uh, right colon flexure or right colic flexure and here we can see this flexure located under surface or uh, behind the liver and on the left side this is the splenic flexure or left colic flexure and it is closely related to the spleen so this two flexure also very very important because during the hemicolectomy in the left side there may be tear or injury to the spleen may occur and in the left side it is rare but sometimes may uh, liver injury occur here we can see important characteristics of the large intestine first of all here we can see first of all this is the tinea coli so tinea coli this is the longitudinal muscle band and total three in number present almost all of the colon up to the rectum rectum uh, in rectum the tinea coli uh, the uh, acts as a continuous layer then you can see the circulation the tinea coli is uh, shorter than that of the large intestine for this the large intestine uh, shape a pocket like structure which is called the circulation or opostra then appendage append epipoloic appendices or appendices epipoloica which is the peritoneal fat fold filled with fat that means the appendices epipoloica or epipoloica appendix it is the back of the fat which suspended in the colon now here the picture first of all this is the longitudinal muscle which is known as the tinea coli then here we can see circulation here we can see the large intestine uh, it is circular or uh, it is divided into portion which is known as the circulation and here appendices epipolica here we can see the appendices epipolica epipolica it is the bag of the fat so again in short this is the cecum upward ascending colon then transversely placed which is transverse colon then descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and anus so uh, first of all arterial supply of the colon the colon is different parts of the artery supply ascending colon transverse colon and descending and sigmoid colon so the artery supply of the colon almost all of the colon it is by the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery so the whole of the colon is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery and the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery they are the branch from the abdominal outer and they are the anterior branch of the abdominal outer we know that the abdominal outer it has three anterior branch among them two are the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery and another one is the celiac branch then ascending colon the ascending colon is supplied by the ileocolic artery 
and uh, right coli cutter and ilo coli cutter right coli cutter they are branched from the superior mesenteric artery then the transverse colon this transverse colon is supplied by the middle colic artery which is also branched from the superior mesenteric artery and descending and sigmoid colon it is supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery so the artery supply of the colon by the superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric artery so here we can see this is the whole of the colon and you can see it this abdominal aorta and from the abdominal aorta two important artery arises and it supplies the whole of the colon the first one here you can see this is the superior mesenteric artery so the superior mesenteric artery it arises and supplies the part of the colon then here we can see another branch from the abdominal aorta which is the inferior mesenteric artery so the superior mesenteric artery and the inferior mesenteric artery they supplies the whole of the colon Then venous drainage and lymphatic drainage and embryology. So first of all, the venous drainage. Venous drainage occurs by two important vein. One is the superior mesenteric vein. Another one is the inferior mesenteric vein. So the superior mesenteric vein and the inferior mesenteric vein, they drain blood from the colon. And lymphatic drainage. This lymphatic drainage occurs in the paraaortic lymph node. And here we can see the embryology mid gut from the second part of the duodenum to the two third of the transverse colon. That means the duodenum, jejunum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and up to the right two third of the transverse colon. This is supply. It is derived from the mid gut, primitive mid gut. And here we can see the hind gut from the hind gut, distal one third of transverse colon or distal on third of transverse colon or left on third of the transverse colon to the anus so first of all let's see the venous drainage here you can see this is the this part is the colon and this colon is supplied by the two important large vein here we can see one vein there is another vein this vein is the superior mesenteric vein and this vein is the inferior mesenteric vein so the tributaries of the superior and inferior mesenteric vein the supplies whole of the colon and we can see the name also here we can see this is the appendicular vein iliac vein ilocolic vein jejunal vein right colic vein middle colic vein also the left colic vein sigmoid vein and superior rectal vein so they are the tributaries of the superior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein and here we can see the lymphatic drainage this is the abdominal outer and we can see the lymphatic drainage finally drain the lymph node which is located around the aorta and this is called the paraaortic lymph node this picture it is very very clear that the lymphatic drainage finally occurs uh, uh, through the different lymph node and lymphatic channel around the abdominal aorta this is the paraaortic lymph node and this is the embryological development here we can see this is the mid gut here we can see this one is the mid gut and this one is the hind gut and we can see the mid gut it develops from here you can see this is the stomach this is part of the duodenum then duodenum up to there and here we can see the hind gut from the hind gut this develops this part that means the distal part of the colon so here we can see this is the mid gut and different development of the mid gut and here this is the hind gut so mid gut this picture it is clear that from here so this part is the duodenum then jejunum and ileum then appendix cecum ascending colon transverse colon transverse colon this is a right two third up to the right two third of the transverse colon these are the mid gut and this mid gut is supplied by the superior mesenteric artery here we can see this artery which is the superior mesenteric artery so from the mid gut the different structure arises as the distal duodenum jejunum ileum cecum appendix ascending colon and proximal two third of the transverse colon or right two third of the transverse colon now the hind gut from the hind gut in the picture we can see 
this portion is the hind gut and from the hind gut this is the left on third of the transverse colon then descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and anus they are derived from the hind gut here we can see this is distal on third or left th on third of the transverse colon descending colon sigmoid colon rectum and proximal anus now the peritoneal location here we can see the right and left colon are part partly interperitoneal and partly extra peritoneal the sigmoid colon and transverse colon are generally wholly intraperitoneal so they are very mobile structure so as the sigmoid colon the sigmoid colon and transverse colon they are wholly interperitoneal so movement of this structure is uh, relatively easy now uh, this has implication for the sequelae of the perforations this is important which will tends to result in generalized peritonitis in wholly in wholly intra peritoneal segment so when perforation occurs in wholly or fully peritoneal or fully peritoneal segment in this case generalized generalized peritonitis develop so uh, here showing the peritoneal covering the part with mesentery this is the transverse colon sigmoid colon appendix and cecum they are covered by the peritoneum and retroperitoneal organ they are the ascending colon descending colon and upper two third of the rectum for this condition they are relatively fixed part and part devoid of peritoneal covering lower one third of the rectum and anal canal so lower one third of the rectum and anal canal there is no peritoneal covering and ascending descending colon upper two third of the rectum they are retroperitoneal organ that means their their anterior part is peritoneal but posteriorly there is no peritoneal so this is all about the anatomy of the colon thank you all for staying with us